next one takes me right back to 1982. I bought that. I was just telling Andy on the telephone. I bought that on 12 inch back then. Uh, I always How much bought... pocket money did you used to have then? I was f- out at work then, Jean. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Really? I was, well, I was very young. I, no, actually, I wasn't, I wasn't quite at work yet. I was 16. Uh, I had a paper round and all that sort of stuff. But, uh, yeah, I, I always used to buy 12 inches rather than a 7 inch at that point because they became very popular and you felt like you got a little bit more for your money. What about yourself? Did you buy uh, 7 or were you 7 or 12 or... Uh, well, I can only remember that I used to buy uh, my first records were Beach Boys records, so I'll go back a bit further than you. Don't tell anyone that, Jean. <laughs> Keep that a secret. Right, we've got Andy overall on the phone from Blue Zoo. You were listening to his song there that reached number 13 in 1982. Cry Boy Cry. I love that tune. I did actually buy it. Uh, but Andy has also, uh, he's, uh, w- when you left in 1985, Andy, what did you actually do? I, there was another band actually. I had another band called um, Get It, uh, Sky West and Crooked, and uh, that, that was um, a new sort of venture. Um, right, more. I was writing the songs myself. You know, I was totally writing all the songs basically. So it was a bit of a a songwriting um, venture, um, which was good. It was good. It was good for me. Um, it was a bit of a a wake up call. Um, but it, it, none of the, none of the, mater- unfortunately, none of the material um, arrived anywhere. We we had a publishing deal, I think, with Warner's um, stuff, but um, the, 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 it didn't do anything like Blue Zoo. But then, following that, um, I, I sort of did a lot of travelling. I, w- um, I went around the world just on my backpacking and stuff, um, and and lived in various different countries and um, like lived in Prague for a while lived in in Barcelona for a while and so forth so did a lot of that sort of thing um and then and then sort of arrived back uh in London and started to get into fungi um which which was I, I don't know what it was that spurred it on I think I think some mushrooms were grown in the back garden and and I, and I thought oh I wonder if I could eat those and um, I did actually pick them and eat them, which was which is what happened, fine. Andy. Were, um, were you okay? And, I, and they were they were fine. Um, but then I I sort of pushed it out a little bit and went to have a look in the parks and found more things, and it sort of grew from there. So w- when you, when you first got that interest from thinking, well, I'd like to go out and uh, you know eat something from land. Of course, it is dangerous. Don't try and go out and pick anything because there are a lot of poisonous species of fungi around, and you have to know what you're looking for. But uh, what inspired you to start up this website? Did you find people asking you a lot of questions about what kind of mushrooms they should eat and pick off the land? Um, what 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 did what? spurred that was initially um we we put together some dates there's like a two or three dates um um at various sites and we sent them to time out and um it was time out time out actually um really picked up on it and went with it they they thought it was really sort of this capital ideas they sort of oh wow what's this you know um so they just, they just went with it, and next thing you know, you got getting loads of phone calls and so forth. So um, that kind of spurred on the thing of the w- websites were the thing they were all kicking off then the website idea and stuff. So it was like get a website. So we 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 built this website. Um, so that's been up and running. That that was sort of I think two. I think that's that came up that we got that up in two thousand. So what are you doing now, Andy? Are you? Uh still doing this uh, quite frequently yeah absolutely i mean what what this has turned into i mean it started off like a few dates but now it's 20 odd dates in the year um at these sites but um you get all the forays are generally packed full um but what what they also supply to the to the governing bodies of the of the areas that i lead the walks in is information about the fungi that are actually fruiting in in their areas um and that i've been feeding back that information to governing bodies like the city of london um in the areas that i i foray yeah so where, sort of whereabouts t- tell us whereabouts you do these walks uh that that would be Hampstead heath um epping forest wimbledon common um putnam common and the new forest so I go out to Wanstead Park every now and again. Well, most Sundays, yeah. and uh, I see lots of fungi there as well. And it's a 
I've I've got an interest in it as well. Sure. And um, so, is that an area you go to? No, but I mean, these, these area exist, areas exist all over London. Um, people, when I, I remember people saying when I first started, nah, there's no mushrooms in London. You know, that that was the general sort of I um, thought on on that kind of thing in being in London. But there's loads of old. Park, um, there's parks that contain really old p- trees and, as you know, and, and shrubs and so forth, and nice bits of uh, pasture that were once old pasture lands um, are all sort of cut up but still exist. So, We've Andy, what we found was a lovely um, avenue of chestnut trees, sweet chestnut trees, and underneath them were these fly agarics, fly which, garrics, are, the, which yeah. are the yeah. splendid ones which are red with white dots on them. Yeah. And uh, we were really thrilled to find um, it was a, a fairy ring. Sure. And uh, why do why do they grow into rings? It's the the, the what the mushrooms grow from um, is is basically the, the the is basically the the engine of the of the fungus. It's the fungus itself. Now that the, it's called the mycelium, and it, it actually grows centrifugally. It grows in a, it grows outwards in a circle, so that's why you get that's why you get the fruiting bodies. They all come off the mycelium. They produce the mushrooms. But they didn't look the same. If they're all from the same uh, sort of uh, thing to start with, why were some of them brown and some of them red? Um, you might have different species there because they're, they're, they are competing like everything else. Um, that they are competing, so they might be in the same. You might get another species in the same area. Now, I want to ask you, if somebody gets involved with what you do, Andy, what can they expect, say they turn up at one of your walks? Well, basically, the walks, we'll have a, we'll have a chat. I'll tell people about, about I'll give them an overview of, of, of fungi in the, in the UK. Um, and then I'll show them basically the nasty ones. I'll give them a, a, a sort of quick overview of the nasty ones, like the death 